All right, Christopher Piopolis. I'm giving this video for my firearm inspection and troubleshooting, as well as my gunsmith tools and that, as well as my engraving. Anyway, let's get started. When you need to fix a item for both the inspection and the gun smooth tools and left, you need to use the correct item. Certain items are not good. You damage the firearm even more so than you already did. It's just best to use the correct item. Best thing to buy a gunsmithing kit or if you have some experience using tools and item tools and items, it would be best for you to go start out slower and go into it. Don't forget treat every firearm as Treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Never punch your weapon at anything unless you're trying to shoot. But since you're not, don't punch your weapon at anything. Keep your finger off the trigger. Make things safe. That stuff. Now, as you see, my light up there is pretty white. Illuminate your area. Have a workspace. My dream wall. I bought it in my fireboard. Once I get enough time to, I'm gonna buy more fireboard, buy another piece of metal and cloth it up once I get done. I also need to paint it with water seal and fireproof paint. And then I need to make a static strap. I don't want to damage any of my stuff. Anyway, back to the, both of the class. Similar to is just basics. First of all, we're gonna start with the fowls. Fowl's purpose is to scratch and cut the surface as smooth pieces of metal off. It can be used for metal, plastic, or wood, but certain fowls have a certain rating and a certain type of teeth pattern that is required to work best with the substance or the surface you want to use. As you can see, this is what provided me from the SDI college. Each fowl, the size is the handle, the teeth settings. The file purpose when you depend on which pattern you go in, if you go straight down or straight up, it will bury into the mirror and the teeth will pull some of the metal off of it. As long as you go in one direction at one angle at a complete stroke without changing it, you can do a proper cutting on it at a certain angle or hardness or softness. You do not want to go down, then come back up, because all you're doing is putting metal in the teeth. And certain of these files shouldn't be used on wood or plastic. This one here can be used for wood, because it's a bastard two-way file. Unless you want to go for a finest polish, then you go for a finer teeth setting, which is a mill saw file. That's for fixing the firearm, or preparing to engrave. You always want to clean your firearm, degrease it, polish it to the best of your ability, and then fall over the surface to get everything down even. <coughs> this is more more than 60. The thread was damaged. Right here, and I can't get out. Now I have to fix the thread, make a new thread. Now, let's move on from tools. This is a brass hammer. Brass is softer than steel. Y'all know the regular hammer with teeth and stuff on it. This is one of the many kind of hammers you can use. You don't want to use a regular store ball hammer or a super hard metal surface hammer or else it would damage both the wood and the plastic. The brass hammer have one brass on one side, and another polymer rubber on the other side. It's basically used for a smaller adjustment to a firearm or a small, you need to hit it soft but not hard enough to damage it, but soft enough where you can do small jobs with it. Moving on to the next set. These are called punch pins. There are many versions of the punch pins, but these are punch pins regular. These are not roll pins, these are not addition pins. Therefore, Doing smaller tags like pushing out pins or small nails and needles and like yep. Like this one, like this one. Like 
This is called organization. Very bad. Don't follow this example. I'm not organized right now. Alright. This is brass. And this is still iron. Still iron. Brass is soft. You want to use it for anything that's easy, soft surface. You don't want to hit anything with steel or iron if it's easy, scratch, scratchable. You does for like a hard push, pushing the pins out. Don't forget, push pin purpose is to hold up on one end. The small end here is a pin which puts out the pin. And the back end on this side is for the hammer to strike. These are flatheads, each come in different sizes. You want to use the right flathead when you're unscrewing or screwing some stuff in. Like thread. You don't, if you use the wrong kind, you can mess up the thread on it. This is my power drill. It has a flathead in it. I've been using it for a while. Like I said, I tried to get that thread out. By now, it was. The threading outside is messed up. I put some brake clean up fluid inside of it to let it soak for a couple days before I can get out. Now these are smaller fowls for engraving. See the surface teeth on it? These are smaller fowls for engraving. You need to get in a tight, tight, smaller area. You just can't do it. These are the best. Don't forget with engraving, polishing, Depending on the surface, you start with a super, super hard grit, like grit 80, to polish it or to fix it. This here is like grit 80 or 90. The surface is extremely, extremely, extremely hard. I use this for drilling. And the next one is surface like this is an eraser that have grit combined on it. I bought this of my for my own personal uses, but it works well even with firearms. The grid here, grid here is between 90 to 100. As you go up in grid number, that's when the final polish come out, and you like want to get super shiny. That's pretty much it for both gunsmithing tools and lab and firearm engraving. I will put more videos up.